Earlier on in the course, I talked about the difference between calling functions and passing parameters by value and passing parameters by reference. So if you haven't watched that movie, now is probably a good time to go watch it so you'll understand what's going on here because I'm going to be talking about function parameter modifiers, which allow you to change the way that parameters are passed to and from functions. So let's just take a quick recap to see how things normally work. Suppose I had a function that takes an integer parameter and it looks like this. And inside that function, I have a piece of code that adds the number 10 to whatever that integer parameter was passed. Now, if I call it from another function that looks like this, and I have an integer named x, and I initialize it to the value of 10, and then I call my function, the code that's inside my function does not change the value of the x variable in the test function down there below. However, I can use a keyword in the parameter list for the function called ref. This causes a parameter to be passed by reference instead of having a copy of its value passed in, which is what the normal case is in C sharp. Now what I would do here is I would declare my function as normal. I have an integer parameter named param1, but I would put the ref keyword in front of the type name, in this case, integer. This causes the param1 parameter to be passed by reference. So now here I have my test function and I've got my integer variable named x. Now when I call the function, I also have to put the ref keyword in front of the parameter that I'm passing to the function. When I do this, param1 is now a reference to the x variable and not a copy of its existing value. This line of code here, param1, plus equals 10 will in fact change the value of x down in the calling function. x will now be equal to 20 when this function returns. And the reason why you need the ref keyword in both places is so that it's really clear what's going on in the code. So you can deliberately do this when you want to be able to change the value of parameters that are passed to functions. So let's take a look at one more example. There's the out keyword. Now, normally, functions return values through their return type, but the out keyword allows a return value to be passed back via a parameter. And you would use this in cases where you wanted a function to be able to pass back more than one result. So let's take a look at an admittedly contrived example. Suppose I had a function named square and root, and square and root takes a number as its first parameter, and I want it to return both the square of that number and the square root of that number. I could pass in a parameter named sq, which would be the square, and I put the out keyword in front of it. I do the same thing for another parameter named sqrt, and I also put the out keyword in front of that type name for that parameter. Now inside the body of the function, I would simply assign values to the square and square root results. So for sq, I would simply multiply num by itself, and that's the square of the number. And then for sqrt, I'm using the .NET Framework's math library to calculate the square root of that number. When I call this from a function, say, named test, and I pass in the parameters, you'll notice that I have to put the out keyword in front of the parameters that I'm passing in. So when I call square and root, I pass in the first parameter, which is x. That's the number who I want to have the square and square root of. Now, when this function completes, the square and the root are going to have the values that were calculated by the square and root function. And you notice I don't have to actually initialize those values because those values are going to be calculated for me by the function. So I don't have to assign initial values to them. Now, it's one thing to hear me yammer on about it. Let's actually go over to the code and actually watch it work. Okay, so here I am in my func param modifiers project. I've got my snippets open to the code for this example. So first I'm going to copy this function, which is the square and root function. Copy that and put it over in my code. Okay, and that's the function that we're going to call. And you can see I'm using the out keyword right here on line 10 to indicate to the compiler that sq and sqrt are going to be out parameters. And I'm going to copy the code going to call it with, and we'll put that down here in the main function. Okay, I'll put a line there. So what we're starting off with here is a number, in this case 9.0, and it's a double, and I've got 
variables named the square and the root, which are going to hold the results. And I just simply call square and root. And I pass in nine, and I've got my out keyword in front of each one of the parameters that are going to hold the output. And I've got a console.write line call that says, hey, the square of this number is this, and its square root is this. And I'm just passing in those results to the write line function. So everything looks good. I hit F6, and it builds just fine. Now let's run it. And you can see that the square of 9 is 81, and its square root is 3. So it works just as we expected it to, and you can use the out keyword and the ref keywords to change the way that parameters are passed to and from functions.